Hey everybody, how's it going? It's a Daily Shooter, and today we're going to talk about and illustrate the ridiculousness of the NFA. The NFA is unconstitutional, it should be repealed, but there's a lot of people out there who simply can't visualize how ridiculous it is. So that's what I want to do with you guys today. Let's go ahead and start. Now, before we get started, I just want to point out one thing, and this should be kind of like a seed in the back of your head to help you think while we talk about what we're going to be talking about here. And that is that the NFA has been used by just about every single administration since its inception to get around the Second Amendment. Now, I do want to mention one more thing. I'm not a lawyer. This should not be considered legal advice. If you're thinking about changing something or adding something, make sure you find out whether or not it's legal first before you do it, just to make sure that you cover yourself, do your own research. Because what I say today, especially with the current administration, might not even be valid 24 hours from now. So try and keep that in mind. And again, always try and cover yourself. So the first thing we're going to talk about in terms of absolute ridiculousness when it comes to the NFA is the difference between an SBR and a rifle. To me, that is where things get the craziest okay there are so many definitions and so many changes and so many differences that it honestly is mind-boggling now we're gonna first take a look at what's considered a standard AR pistol this right here has a ten and a half inch barrel it's chambered in 300 blackout what is the difference between this which is not covered under the NFA and something that is covered in the NFA is it the length of the barrel no exactly the same as a pistol versus an SBR. Is the action different? No, it's exactly the same. Trigger? No. Upper and lower? No. Handguard? No. This legal pistol is almost exactly the same as something that would be considered a short-barreled rifle under the NFA. The only difference is there is no 90 degree angle vertical grip. 90 degree is also something you want to pay attention to because as per the ATF, it has to be a 90 degree angled vertical grip. If you have something that's an angled grip, that doesn't apply. Simply moving the angle from 65 degrees to 90 degrees would change this from a pistol to an NFA SBR. So again, let me reiterate that, okay? Having a vertical grip on the front of this thing that is 65 degrees, 85 degrees, 80 degrees, based on the ATF's definition of a vertical grip, does not make this an SBR. However, if you were to change the angle 5, 10, 15 degrees so that it's straight up and down and perpendicular to the barrel, that would make this an NFA item. Therefore, illegal for me to own without going through the paperwork and getting a tax stamp and everything else. Therefore, I could actually be in some serious jail time for owning something with a 90 degree vertical grip versus the guy who would be standing right next to me with the exact same setup, but his grip is only 70 degrees. That minor difference in the degree of something could be the difference between an NFA item and something that's not regulated under the NFA. Now, another thing is here, this does not have a stock on it. This has a brace on it. If I was to take this brace off and put a stock on it, on it, a shouldering device, that would also take this exact same pistol right here and turn it into a regulated NFA item. And we all know that that's what the current administration is trying to do. They're trying to reclassify this so that, you know, there is basically no way to get around it. This would be an SBR under, uh, you know, the changes that they're trying to make. But still, at least at the time of this video, to my knowledge, this is a pistol. Even though it's by only 5, 10, 15 degrees, an SBR still. It's, it's just mind boggling. But basically we're looking at overall length here. We're looking at the length of the barrel being less than 16 inches. You know, all of those things come into play that make this a pistol and or an SBR. However, this again, pistol or SBR, depending on its features, right? Is longer than this. This is shorter than what you guys were just looking at by about a half an inch. Shorter, chambered in 5.56. Five, this has a stock on it. This, I can put a vertical grip on it. Perfect 90 degrees if I wanted to. I can add whatever accessory I want to this with the stock and still about a half an inch shorter. Why is that? All because the internal barrel is 16 and a half inches. This is a Tavor X95. It is a bullpup. 
Okay, so we have the trigger and the grip and everything else located in front of the magazine. So the action is located in a different spot. The barrel is able to be pushed back, which shortens the overall package. So why is this not an SBR? Simply because of that 16 inch barrel. Now, if I was to convert this and let's say have the barrel start here, right? And make the barrel an eight to 10 inches and leave it in the same configuration, it would be an SBR because it has a stock. That's it. But because the barrel is 16 and a half inches, it somehow does not become an SBR. That is the ridiculousness of the NFA. It is 100% unconstitutional. The NFA is absolutely ridiculous, but the definitions in there are such that it is extremely confusing because somebody who does not know would probably look at something like this and say, oh wow, I wonder if that's even legal. I wonder if that falls under the NFA because look how short it is. It's shorter than a 10 and a half inch barreled AR pistol it, and it has a stock on it. Therefore, it must be an SBR, right? Nope, again, 16 and a half inch barrel. That somehow takes us from a short barreled rifle to a full length barreled rifle and therefore just a rifle. Apparently, length means absolutely nothing. They try and make it seem like it's all about length. It's all about concealability. It's all about length, and it's not. It's not about length whatsoever. It's just about them trying to come after the most popular firearm in the United States, the AR. Okay, so let's go and continue on with the absolute nonsense that is the NFA and the muddy waters of pistols, rifles, and SBRs. So this right here is something that I put together myself. It has a 14 and a half inch barrel and it has a stock on it. Why would this not be considered an SBR if the barrel length is shorter than 16 inches and it has a stock on it? I'll tell you why. Because the muzzle device on this is pinned and welded, therefore making it part of the barrel itself and that makes it reach longer than 16 inches. So with that pinned and welded muzzle device being part of the barrel, we can measure this thing out to a full 16 plus inches, making this a rifle. Now, if you were to have this exact same setup, I mean the exact same setup all around, stock, upper, lower, everything is exactly the same, and you were to simply unpin that muzzle device, somehow now it becomes an SBR. Why is that? Well, because they measure from the muzzle. And so if you measure from the muzzle and it's not pinned, then technically the muzzle is at the very end of the threaded part of the barrel itself. And that's basically the only difference. These two exact same things, exact same things, could be considered two completely different things under the NFA just based off of that tiny little pin that is holding that muzzle device permanently onto this barrel. Now, it gets even better. It gets even better. I bet you didn't know that this right here, okay, this little 365, I bet you didn't know that this little 365 could be considered a rifle. How could it be considered a rifle? It's tiny. It's a little micro compact. It's super small. There's no way that that thing could be considered a rifle. Well, guess what? If I attach some type of shouldering device to this, you know, a little shouldering device, maybe pins to the back and comes off and allows you to push it against your shoulder, that would put this under the NFA as a short barreled rifle. Simple as that. If I was to add a 90 degree vertical grip to this, it would also fall under the NFA. What changes about it? Absolutely nothing. Everything is the same. The slide, the frame, the internal components, the way that it operates, the barrel length, everything would be exactly the same. But simply putting a shouldering device on the back of this little bitty thing right here would make this, believe it or not, again, a short barreled rifle. I know that I'm kind of repeating myself here over and over, but it feels like it needs to be repeated. It is that absolutely ridiculous. That's something to consider. If the government can look at something that's this big and say, if you have something that allows you to stabilize it, simply stabilize it by putting a, another point of contact on your shoulder on it, somehow makes it a rifle, we know that we have completely lost our minds. The NFA is absolutely ridiculous. Now, I don't own any silencers, I don't own any SBRs, and I don't plan to because I've already been through registration as somebody who lived in California, and I don't feel like registering anything with the federal government. 
So I don't see myself having anything like that anytime soon. As bad as I want it, I just don't feel like paying the government 200 bucks, waiting six months to a year so that they can give me something that should be legal anyway. But when it comes to silencers, let's think about it. What is a silencer? It's hearing protection. That's what a silencer is. A, a silencer protects your hearing. These things are inherently loud, very, very loud. And I already have tinnitus from using these with ear protection on. That's why nowadays I actually double up on my hearing protection. I put in uh, foam earplugs and then I put a headset over it just so that I can dumb down the noise as much as possible so that I'm not deaf by the time that I'm 60. So what is a suppressor or a silencer, whatever you want to refer, it as, refer to it as? It is simply hearing protection. The NFA is so ridiculous that it has taken hearing protection and turned it into a regulated item. So again, amongst the other things, a small pistol, right? Being able to be turned into a rifle by having contact with the shoulder. A simple pin and a muzzle device, the exact same thing could make it an SBR versus a rifle. Having the 16 inch barrel move back, making it even shorter than a simple pistol. Somehow that's a rifle. And taking a pistol, putting a stock on it or a 90 degree vertical grip could take that exact same pistol with no other modifications to its overall operation whatsoever, and that can fall under the NFA. It's all about definitions. It's all about words. It's not about the actual use of the firearm or how the firearm operates. It's all about these minor details that they can use to make the changes that they need to to make something fall under the NFA so that then they can regulate it. Because if it's under the NFA, it's going to be difficult to get. You're going to have to pay them extra money. You're going to have to register it. We all know that registration is one of their end games, and we know what registration leads to. So this is all part of a bigger scheme to put more and more things under the NFA so that then, guess what? Now you have to register it. It's, uh, it's all part of the bigger game. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to talk about it. Again, how ridiculous the NFA is. A completely unconstitutional law that should not be on the books that affects everybody in the United States and could turn a grandmother who is 75 years old into a felon without even knowing it. That's what the NFA does to people. That's what the NFA does to law-abiding Americans. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.